August 1845, the heroic expedition of Britain's greatest explorer went fatally wrong. The Jolin expedition was supposed to put the final piece in the Empire's jigsaw by discovering the Northwest Passage and planting a flag on its soggy bottom. Britain would have reached every corner of the globe, pillaged every civilization on Earth, and finally ruled the waves. It was not to be. In 1846, Commander John Lynn was two months behind schedule. Winter was coming. All the crew could catch were frozen cod. Sushi had not yet been invented, and the exhausted men's hopes of Friday fish and chips was a cruel mirage. The crew were close to mutiny when the ice pack trapped the Erebus. It was the beginning of the end. The ship drifted at the mercy of the ice for seven months before it grounded on the same iceberg that sank the Titanic 66 years later. So Frank abandoned ship. The skeleton crew were dispatched to find a Lyle's Corner House, a mug of tea and spotted dick. As all British heroes must, Sir Frank stayed on his ship till the bitter end. And there the story ends. Lady Jonlin offered £1 million for any news leading to the discovery of her husband. 30 missions failed to find the commander. Sherlock Holmes was baffled. After investigating the case for two years, he concluded it was far from elementary. The ice done it, he told the Times of London. Or perhaps it was the polar bears. Of course, by the law of improbable probability, it's equally perhapsable that the ship floated through the Northwest Passage and Sir Frank is high as a skunk in a Shanghai opium den as we speak. Mm. What really happened, nobody has known until now. In 2022, isologists from the drowned Canada exploring HMS Erebus discovered a locked cabin deep in the hold. Do not disturb, buzz off, read a sign nailed to the door. Being scientifically trained, the isologists were not phased. With an optimum keyhole electric scalpel powered by four state-of-the-art AA batteries, they cut a hole in the door. When asked what he could see, mission leader Jacques-Yves Roger Mondieu Granola put his eye to the spy hole and said through the comms on his face mask, Nothing! It is patch black in here! Merde! Mother! The project recovered just 18,735 artefacts from the site, endangered by global warming and fast melting ice, before the winter ice froze back to seal over the wreck's treasures. After four painstaking days in the lab, conservators decrudded an embossed leather folio with intact pages inside and a feather quill pen still stuck inside the cover. It was unique. Nobody could tell whether the book was a book or who had written the pages inscribed with the initials FJ above the John Lynn family crest. Another six months of scientific head scratching was essential. Eventually, the night porter suggested the professors might try multispectral imaging to read the blank pages. When asked to explain, the porter added that it was a technique to capture different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum, including those visible to the naked eye. I read it in Smithsonian Magazine, he shrugged. Suddenly, the invisible became visible. Thanks to a laptop left on a train by a Ministry for Defence heritage officer, Wreckwatch can now share the sunken book's earth-shattering contents for the first time, and the true fate of Britain's greatest polar hero. Captain's Log, Ice Day 285. Stuck in the ice for six months, 12 days. It's the third hour since the Coleman's mustard ran out. How are we supposed to eat the roast beef? We're doomed. There's white stuff everywhere. The boys are betting on whether it will be a white Christmas. Desperation has set in. Lieutenant Gore is dribbling on his rocking chair, singing on a loop the good ship Venus. Stanley the surgeon lost his second round of Russian roulette and didn't have the dickens of decency to mop up after himself. Cold enough to freeze the balls of a polar bear. 14th of December, 1846. Captain's log, ice day 293. Stuck in the ice for a jolly long time. No mustard, now no beef. Down to 14 carrots, six onions, and just 690 boxes of trifle. Darn inconvenient. Weeks the carpenter started singing in the meek midwinter to get into the Christmas spirit. Bloody cheek. Had to drag him by the ear up to the top deck and give him 40 lashes. Minus 48 degrees wind factor out there. Right arm snapped off mid-blow. Never mind. Standards must be maintained. 
Christmas Day, 1846. Captain's Log, Ice Day 304. Finish the last keg of brandy, sang God Save the King. Pissed as a new. Laugh like a drain in the memory of old Lady J putting too much brandy on the figgy pudding last Christmas and burning down the manor. Classic that one. It was a tad expensive. Wonderful lunch. Jacko the monkey for starters, followed by Neptune the Newfoundland dog for mains, and Tiddles the cat and trifle for dessert. Stuff like a Windsor Park stag head. Crew came down with terrible wind though, always complaining. Bit gassy down below. Then Jenkins lit the night candles, blew the bloody sides out of the forward stern. 31st of December, 1846. Captain's log, ice day 310. Trying to keep a stiff upper lip for the crew. Humming always look on the bright side of life <laughs> and flicking chamber the cabin's boys rub with my towel. No reaction. Not much spirit, that chap. Hang on, he's not breathing. Hm, seems dead. Miserable lot down here. No backbone. Try boarding at Eton or the Battle of Trafalgar. Bit of a tight spot, that one. Finished eating the candles and shoes last week. Feeling a bit peckish. Decided needs must. I am the master and commander, after all. Bang diggled the chef's head with a saucepan when he was praying on his knees before bed. Roasted his podgy torso with a nice bottle of claret. Surprisingly tender. And there ends the diary. A spokesperson for Drowned Canada has called Sir Frank Johnlin's diary the discovery of the century. Now we finally know what happened to Sir Frank. He died of RTED, Repetitive Trifle Eating Disorder. This find is better than Tutankhamun's tomb. Na 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 na. Almost as good as the curse of Oak Island. Experts are calling on UNESCO to declare the wreck a World Heritage Site but underwater. Only they remembered that UNESCO doesn't approve of people digging shipwrecks. They decided not to. The night porter responsible for the reading of the blank diary is favourite to win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2023. The wreck of HMS Erebus was originally the property of the UK Ministry for Defence, and they weren't that bothered, and they gave it to Drown Canada as little brother's birthday present, except for the gold. We'll have that back, thank you very much. Today the wreck is co-owned by Drown Canada and the Inuit Heritage Foundation. As their joint property, the diary is being cut in half sideways and shared fairly as the perpetual global heritage of humanity. In 2023, Inuit Heritage Foundation is planning to recover samples of the Erebus's trifle pudding, to reconstruct its DNA in the lab and sell tins of Sir Frank's Fancy at Costco. It's a win-win for science. Watch this space.